everyone. My name is Eve Porcello. I'm coming to you live on tape from my home office in Tahoe City, California. I am so excited to be here today to talk to you about GraphQL. Talking about GraphQL is pretty much my favorite thing to do. Uh, we're going to get into mocking with Apollo Server and how we can use mocking tools to make our work easier as developers. And there are some really awesome tips that I want to share with you. So before we get started, my name is Eve Porcello again. You can find me at Eve Porcello everywhere online. And I work with Moon Highway. We teach engineers how to write better code. We teach JavaScript and Node and GraphQL and React courses. We also create learning materials for LinkedIn Learning, used to be lynda.com, and Egghead.io. And we've written a couple books. Uh, this is an old book called Learning React, and we're working on a second edition of that, so hold off on buying this one. We also have Learning GraphQL. There was only the Portuguese version in my office today, so that's what I'll show you. But you can find it in a bunch of different languages. A common phrase you may have heard about GraphQL is that it's a query language for your API. But GraphQL is also a type system for your API. This allows everyone to understand what are the types that are part of our domain and allows people to work on the project in their own separate areas. But as developers, we may want to start building stuff right away. We want to be able to prototype, even if we don't have the data sources set up. This is where Apollo Server comes into play. Apollo Server has some built-in tools that we can use to build mocking into our applications so that we can start to build our products right away. The place I want to get started with this project is here at this GitHub repo, github.com slash GraphQL workshop slash mocking. These are going to be the start files that we can use to build our Apollo Server with some mocking setup. You can totally follow along if you'd like to, but I do want to point out that there is a complete branch where you can see all of the files complete. Now, the next step is let's take a look at our code in VS Code. We should see a simple Apollo server running. We have our server being imported. Then we're going to create our schema in our type definitions. We'll create some resolvers, and then we're going to go ahead and construct and start our server. So over here in the playground on localhost 4000, we should see that we can query hello. All right, so that's pretty good, but I think we can do a little bit better. I want to add on to our schema. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to create a new type and let's go ahead and create a type called cat. This is the internet after all. Then we're going to go ahead and give it a name a non-nullable string, an age, which is an int, and we'll say whether or not the cat is nice. And that's going to be a nullable boolean. Then instead of our query here, we're going to say all cats, and then we're going to return a list of these cat objects. Now, Again, with mocking, the whole point is maybe we don't have our data sources set up yet, or maybe those are being maintained by another team and we don't have access to them yet. So what we can do is instead of having to deal with resolvers, let's just get rid of them. We're going to add a key to our server constructor, and we're just going to say instead of resolvers, we're going to say mocks true. Let's give that a save and check it out in the browser. And if I hit a refresh, I should see our updated schema. We see all cats. Now again, I don't have any resolvers written. I don't have any data sources connected. But if I try to query for the ID, the name, the age, and whether or not they're nice, and I click play, we're going to get some fake data back. So how cool is that? We've added mocking to our server simply by adding this mocks true key. Now, if we investigate this a little bit closer, we'll see that an ID here returns sort of a long ID string. Anything that's a string is going to return hello world. Anything that is an int will return a positive or negative integer, and then the Boolean will just be true or false. And however many times I send that, it's going to be the same result. And by same result, I just mean it'll return the same types. 
So this is how the default mocking works with Apollo Server. It's going to give us back some standard values for those fields. Now, of course, we can customize these mocks. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we might approach this. The first thing I'll do is we're going to create a new object called box. And then this time we're going to define a function that's going to return some sort of value for an ID. So anytime I query a field that returns an ID, I want to return this value. So for now, let's just say 32. That's the ID for everything. Then let's go ahead and say int should return six. A string should return my cat's name, Biscuit. And then we'll return a Boolean. And this time we'll just return true because Biscuit is really good. All right, so now instead of saying mocks true, which is how we would use the default mocks, we're gonna take this true away and instead pass this entire object of functions that are gonna fire whenever we see this type. So we'll give that another save. We'll go back to localhost 4000 and we're gonna go ahead and click play. And yeah, we should see that IDs now return 32. All of our strings return biscuit all of our ints return six, and then all of our Booleans return true. So this is our first look at how to set up some custom mocking. We're mocking by type. Now, of course, we can take this even a step further to make this more customized. So what I wanna do is go to our terminal window, if I can find it, and we're going to stop our service from running and we're gonna install Faker. So Faker is just a, an NPM package that we can use to generate some fake data for certain fields. You can use Casual or any other package that you would like, but Faker is a really nice option. Now that I've installed Faker, we're going to import it at the top of our server file. So we'll say const Faker equals require faker. Now faker has a bunch of functions that are available with it. So functions to return anything from a UUID to a number, to a name, to a Boolean. So we can use this package to, instead of just generating these flat values, we can use it to generate dynamic data that aligns more closely with these types. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to replace 32 with faker.random.uuid, and that's a function. Then we're going to say faker.random number. Now this time we're going to provide a min. So we'll say one and a max, which we'll say 100, because all pets live to be 100. And then we're gonna go ahead and use another pretty cool function from faker, faker.name.firstname. Awesome. And finally, this is gonna do pretty much the same thing as the built-in mock, but let's go ahead and generate a random Boolean. So either true or false at random. Okay. So now that we've done that, we can take a look at our server. I think I need to restart it. So let's say npm start. Now in the browser, I can send the same query and we see a couple new things going on. The UUID is still generating this long UUID. Let me switch this to light mode. I think it might be a little easier to read. So this is going to be our UUID, we have a random first name being generated. So that's kind of cool to generate a first name. We have our age, a number between one and 100 being generated. And we also have a Boolean, true or false. 
So our data is a little bit more dynamic now. We're starting to see some data that will sort of mirror real life data when we eventually build our prototypes. And now that I have this set up, I can set out to really be a client side developer. I can build my client applications without having to set up my data sources. All right, let's take this another step further. We're going to create a new type, and this new type is going to be called horse. So horses have IDs as well. They have names. They have ages, of course. And then they have descriptions. So now that I have my horse type, I'm going to go ahead and make some adjustments to my mox object. A horse has an ID, so I'm going to use the UUID that I have already. Same goes for the int and the string. Now the field in question is the description. So if I want to create a description, I'm going to add a mock for a type. So the syntax is a little tricky here. Make sure that you're returning an object. This object will have a key for the field that you want to return a value for. So we'll say description, and then we're gonna call that faker function. So faker.random.array element. And we're gonna pass in a, an array of descriptions. So we'll say majestic, and we'll say honorable, see if I can type that, honorable, and then we'll go ahead and say street smart. So these are all of the possible descriptions for our horse. All right, so now all of our fields should be covered. We have an ID, an int, a string, and then we have a description. So if I ask for this field, it should return one of these values. The final step I want to take here is, of course, I need to add all horses, and this should return a list of horse objects. Cool. Let's replace our cat's query with all horses. ID, name, description, and age. All right, so now we see this random value being generated street smart majestic all being pulled out because we have this faker function that's going to find one of those items for an array that's going to find one of those items from an array and return it now what we've noticed so far we have a all cats query and we have an all horses query both of these are returning lists of objects now, each time I am returning a list of objects, we notice there's only two. So you might be asking, why in the world is it only returning two? I don't have any data, so this makes no sense. The reason for this is just that's the default. Lists are always going to return two objects. Now, if you want to return a certain number of objects or if you want to return a random number of objects, we can go ahead and make this possible by incorporating the mock list. All right, so the mock list is going to, for each one of these queries, it's going to return a certain number of objects. So let's go ahead and add our query to our mocks object. Again, this is gonna return a function. We're gonna use that interesting syntax again where we return an object. So we're gonna make sure to have the arrow point to a set of parentheses and then have a set of curly bright have a set of curly braces inside that. Now every time I query all cats, I want to return a new mock list. And this time for all of these I want to return five. So if I go to my query again, and I look for all cats. This time I'm just going to return the name. I should see five cats here. One, two, three, four, and five. You can also send this mock list constructor an array. This means that it'll return between one and 20 cat objects. 
So every time I send this request, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it's always going to return a different number between one and 20. There we go. So that's how that mock list works. We're going to require the mock list from Apollo server. We're going to create a new mock list, and then it's going to return between one and 20. And of course, you could do this for our horses as well. You just say all horses. And this time for each one of these horses, let's say I have a UI that just displays four different horses. I can send a single value to that. And then now I can say all horses. And no matter how many times I click it, it'll always be four. Very cool. So far, we have assumed that we don't have any data. We just want to use mocks. But sometimes we might have some resolvers to return some data for certain fields for a part of the schema. So let me replace all cats. I'm just going to remove this. And I'm going to create another object for resolvers. This time, our query will have a resolver for all cats. And every time I query the all cats field, I want to return an object where there's an ID of one and a name, meatball. And prettier will save me and make that look a lot better. Now I'm going to collapse these mocks and I'm going to add resolvers to my server constructor. So again, I have some data for our resolvers that I want to return just one object every time I query the all cats field. We query the name, the ID, and the age. We're still seeing these mocks. So I'm seeing the name field, I'm seeing the number between one and 100, and I'm seeing the UUID. So notice that the mocks are overriding the resolvers in this case. So what we need to do is, if you have some other data that you wanna use, you need to add another key here. So we're gonna say mock entire schema, false. Now if I try that again, I'm going to see one and meatball, but then for any fields that don't exist, like age or like nice, it's going to provide me those dynamic values from the mocks. So there are a lot of situations where, yeah, you might have all of your data for the cats, but you don't have anything for horses yet. You can use this dual approach by saying mock entire schema false so that some sort of value is provided, even if you don't have everything, but you have some things. Something that I absolutely love about GraphQL is that it is a type system for your API. So type systems lend themselves really nicely to mocking. And this is just the tip of the iceberg for all of the cool things that you can do with mocks. So if you want to use Apollo Server, they have some great documentation for how to get started with this stuff. But mocking exists in any GraphQL project. All you need to do is return certain values that match your types for each one of those fields. And you can get prototyping and get building without having to wait on data sources to be set up, connected, and so on and so forth. I want to thank everyone for being here today. Again, you can find me online at Eve Porcello. I write a lot of articles and blogs on our website, moonhighway.com. And you can also join our mailing list at bit.ly slash moonhighway to stay on top of all of the latest developments in GraphQL, React, and much more. So thanks to everyone for being here. Thanks to the ByteConf organizers. This has been amazing. Always feel free to get in touch if I can ever help you in your GraphQL journey. Thanks so much again.